Hey everybody, happy Sunday to all of you watching. I hope you've had a wonderful weekend and look forward to a very productive and fun week ahead. So um, I've been mentioning this on several videos, being at home and not traveling as I normally do uh, throughout the year, I've been taking on different projects. So I have really attacked my humidor. And so I actually went into, I have several different humidors throughout because I have outgrown the, the main humidor that I use that you guys have seen on videos in the past. Um, in fact, I have um, even outgrown those and I have, I have had like igloo type of um, for excess boxes and things like that that I get just to keep them all humidified properly. And um, so I went through all of that. I kind of pulled different cigars, rotated, organized them better. And I've been doing that for a little bit. It takes me a while to get through all of them. But um, in doing that, I have found some different cigars, some that are, uh, you know, not around necessarily anymore, certain brands, some that are older, um, just you know, some interesting different cigars. So I'm kind of, in the next few weeks, I'll be pulling some different sticks and hopefully you guys can find them. With this week's top five, I'm actually gonna be giving away um, all five of these sticks to one of you watching because I, am, I just, I have a lot of cigars and so I wanna pass on the, the, the love, if you will. But um, I did pull a couple of these from um, one of the Pro Cigar boxes when it was, gosh, it's been a few years now, it was their 10th anniversary of Pro Cigar. So there's a couple cigars from there. However, those cigars that are found in there can also be found in your local brick and mortar. So it's not like an exclusive type of thing. However, those two that are in this lineup happen to be super um, aged and, and older and all that fun stuff. So um, one of you will get this lovely five pack and it's coming straight from my humidor and hopefully into yours. So without further ado, let me get into these cigars here. Starting with number five, we have the um, Por, oh, I'm sorry, Por La Raniaga. This is a brand that um, don't see a lot of them. In fact, um, it just depends on, you know, who is your uh, home lounge and whatnot. There's certain lounges that I found that have a really cool supply of like, I mean, they have a, just a, a tremendous humidor. Peter Shaw comes to mind, PCB cigars that will, you'll find cigars in there that you're just like, what? I haven't even seen these in years. He's uh, somebody that's, that carries a, a variety of different cigars, vintage and all kinds of fun stuff. But there's a few of them out there that will have um, a cigar like this one. But um, it's a beautiful stick. This one, actually, as I mentioned, it came from the 10 year pro cigar box. And again, that was in my humidor, had been in there for a while. So it um, has some age to it. Um, this one features an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper, a Dominican, uh, specifically a Piloto 2012 vintage on the filler and then Dominican, I'm sorry, that was on the binder. Then the filler is a Piloto 2012 and an Olor 2013 vintage for the filler. So this one's really creamy. Um, you get some nice aged cedar in this. Um, it's actually been a while since I've smoked this particular stick and because I'm gonna be giving it away, I'm not gonna light this individual cigar up. So I'm going off of memory as far as taste and, and flavor notes and all that. And I would imagine being that it's been sitting in there for a couple years, it's probably just really kind of mellowed out. It was not a super strong cigar to begin with. It was more on the mild side. So this one I would imagine would be excellent as your first cigar of the day with coffee, especially if you're somebody that takes cream in your coffee, definitely you could see this being a tremendous pairing for that. So um, yeah, so that one is the, number five this week. And again, in certain lounges, you should be able to find that. It just depends. It's kind of like that whole fun of the, the search and the hunt. Um, I know some of you enjoy that. Like myself, I always enjoy walking into different humidors uh, when I did travel more, uh, not this year, but um, it's always fun to kind of look and see those hidden gems that maybe aren't your necessarily common, you know, cigars that you'll find everywhere. But moving on, this one, it, is this particular cigar happens to have been in my humidor for a long time. So there's some nice yellowing to the cellophane on here. Um, but this one you should also be able to find in a variety of uh, local brick and mortars. This is the Asylum and it's a little torpedo. This is part of the CLE umbrella of different uh, lines that they carry. So the Asylum is, it's actually a Nicaraguan puro. It's about a medium to not quite full bodied, 
stronger on the medium bodied side of things. So you're going to get kind of a dark roast coffee. You get a leather, a black pepper. There's some earthiness that comes to mind. Um, I have, well, I've done a review of a couple different asylums back in the day. Uh, this one I haven't smoked in a while. So, um, lucky winner who will get this one. It does, as I mentioned, have some nice age to it. So uh, I'm actually excited for whoever gets to smoke this one. Moving on to number three. This one's also been in my humidor for, I don't know, at least a year or so. It's not super new, but it's not super old either. This is the Villager. This is the La Meridiana, and it's part of the, the kind of the name that, I don't really know why they did the whole El Mundo del Tabaco name, but they, I, I don't know. Anyways, this is a European, <laughs> originated in a, the European market, brought to the US market, um, which is common for Villager. They have their their main emphasis usually on the European market for the most part. And then they kind of trickle into the U S market, but this is a nice little box pressed and it's featuring a actually, sorry, this one's also a Nicaraguan puro, and it's slightly on the bolder side for the Villager portfolio. If you will, um, you get a little bit of the milk chocolate in there, medium roast coffee, damp earth, uh, roasted cashew. There's a light spice in the background on this one. Um, and I did forget to mention the price points on the other two. Both are under $10, as is this one. This one does come in about five different Vitolas. So they'll range from, I think it's on the low side, just under $7, all the way to just under $11, again, depending on what Vitola you select, which is true of the first two that I mentioned on the lineup. Both are right around like, you know, $9 price point things like that. So very affordable, which I always like. And I know all of us appreciate that. Those of us who smoke a lot of cigars, it's always nice to find those, those cigars that come in with a still a nice flavor profile under $10. I'm a fan of those. Moving on to number two this week is actually a newer cigar. This one is a newer release from the Hoyo de Monterrey lineup. This one is an Epicure Selección. So you may or may not have been seeing these kind of floating around Instagram as they started sending out, you know, it's different this year. Normally those of us in the cigar industry and in cigar media, we go attend the uh, big cigar trade show every year, which is normally around, well, it would have already passed. It's usually early July. And of course this year that didn't happen. So now people are kind of getting these different things mailed out to them and it just changes the whole, the whole, um, the whole fun of it, if you will, but trying to stay positive on that. It's still nice to get the different samples and kind of talk to you guys about what's new out there. So I will be doing a full review of this one. Um, it's actually really good. And um, so this is coming in number two, beautiful ash on it. And it's kind of an homage to Honduras. This is of course the non-Cuban Hoyo that there's several in their overall portfolio. This one's more traditional band to it. I really like the, the old school look to it. And it is a Honduran puro and, um, you're getting so far notes of kind of like a leathery spice and there's a little bit of a, of a sweetness kind of more on the plum raisin family of, of sweeter fruity kind of a profile. So really nice and I'm enjoying it quite a bit. As I mentioned, I'll be doing a full review of this one so you can check that out uh, here very soon. And that brings me to number one which also came from that lovely Pro Cigar 10th anniversary box, one of the boxes they give out a lot during the Pro Cigar um, festivities. This is the LFD Coronado. I actually did a review of this one probably a couple years ago at least, and it's um, not new by any means. It's part of the overall um, LFD portfolio. It's one of the, I wouldn't call it, milder, but it's not as strong as some of the other offerings in uh, the LFD portfolio. But I really like this one. I liked it right away as soon as I smoked it the very first time, which I do remember. <laughs> um, this one is a Nicaraguan Habano wrapper. And then of course the Dominican binder filler grown um, from the La Flor Dominicana family. So Lido, I've been out to their farm and their factory a couple times. So much fun if you get a chance once all things open up again and they do the different um, like festivals. Highly encourage you to visit the LFD if you can make it to the farm. It's beautiful out there to see the fields of green tobacco. It's just amazing as well as their factory. It's um, 
I mean, it's just beautiful in there. I, I love it. There's so many aspects of it from the rolling rooms to there's like this back room. That's a kind of a, what do they do? I think it's an aging room, uh, but it's just a really neat setup. It's, it reminds me of something you'd see in like old, old Spain. I mean, it just kind of has that older vintagey Spanish feel to it. I just love their overall property. It's gorgeous. And then Lito always is famous for, you know, dancing, music, food, all that fun stuff. So it's, again, it's a, it's a good time if you get a chance to go out there and actually visit them at their factory and facility, which hopefully will all resume normalcy here at some point soon. Um, but yeah, just a beautiful cigar. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and give this five pack, including not this particular one I'm smoking, obviously, but I do have a couple more of these that I'll throw in for this five pack, um, unique to my viewers. And so make sure you're a subscriber on my YouTube channel. And I wanna hear your comments on um, my curiosity. So this is how you're gonna to enter to win this five pack. I wanna know if, um, because again, going through my humidor, I'm seeing these different cigars, some of them, not available anymore. Some of them have been limited runs. Um, so I'm curious when I do reviews, do you guys prefer when it's a cigar that I review that's easy to find, you can walk into pretty much any brick and mortar and find it. Do you prefer that type of review or do you like kind of those harder to find ones that maybe you may never, you know, get to smoke it, but it's cool because at least you got to hear about it. You know, is that, I don't know. I'm always curious, like what the feedback is. I know there's, there's both for sure, but I'm curious from those of you, you know, specifically, like, what do you prefer? You guys are my viewers and I want to make sure I'm producing content that you guys enjoy. So I'd love to read through your comments and tell me, you know, different things that you're looking for, um, stuff that you prefer and all of that. So be sure to post your comments, make sure you're a subscriber to my YouTube channel. Please like the video and um, share it if you will too. And I can't wait to get, one of you uh, this beautiful five pack. So thanks so much for watching and have a wonderful week ahead. Cheers.